Welcome to the Mind Body Podcast, your rebellious podcast about a strong body, calm mind, healing, and fully living. I'm your host, Maria Angelova, creator of the Angelova Method, an integrative approach to mind and body connection. The Angelova Method redefines your success equation to include a healthy body and a healthy mind. Hi Rebels and welcome to the Mind Body Podcast, your rebellious podcast with me, your host Maria, where it is all about a strong body, calm mind, healing and fully living. Today our special guest is Deborah Knight. Hello Deborah, who is passionate about supporting women who have gone through the trauma of sexual abuse. She does some profound work which you'll get an opportunity to talk about and I'm really excited to have you Deborah here today because um, based on our prior interactions, I can just feel your passion and your drive to really help from the heart and serve those who need help. So welcome here. Thanks very much for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Yes, me too. Deborah, let's start by giving an opportunity to our listeners to get to know you and give us three words and a little bit of a backstory behind each word to who Deborah is. Okay, um, so I think the first one would probably be positive. I'm a really positive person. I think you have to be really positive. Um, the work that I'm involved in is often really distressing and really difficult. So having a positivity that I can fall back on is really important to sort of looking after myself and also just enjoying my life. Um, so I really try to to keep that as as a real key part of everything I do, being positive. Um, I think tenacious. I like to get things done. I'm not happy if I can't achieve something or can't get something done. I always try my best at everything. I'm not saying I always achieve it, but um, I always try really hard to get it done. Um, and lastly, I would probably say silly or childish. I think um, it's really important to have a bit of fun, be a bit silly, be a bit strange, do things that um, make you laugh um, and just have, have joy and have fun with your life. Yeah. You know, I, I was kind of ping on the last word that you said, and in that fun and playful spirit that, you know, a lot of the work I do with my clients can be physically uncomfortable mentally uncomfortable emotionally uncomfortable and I you know I throw in little jokes and like they laugh because they were like oh man this exercise burns and I'm like isn't it delicious doesn't it feel amazing into your body and they just like roll their eyes at me and they're like yeah right that's not the word I would describe but we just try to make it light and make something that's uncomfortable be a little bit more fun and the feedback I've gotten to people is they're like, man, the way you cheerlead us and the way you push us to do to, that are uncomfortable with like making it fun and making it uh, silly helps so much to go through the process of growth because growth is uncomfortable regardless of the degree of trauma you have been to, right? There are different degrees of trauma. And then actually I want to go back to the word positive because the one thing that I started thinking about, Deborah, is caregivers and you're in the role of a CEO you're not you know taking care of a family member however I would imagine a lot of these people become like family with their stories and the way you support their journey you mentioned that you have to stay positive so that you can support them let's talk a little bit about that what's the importance of keeping the caregiver positive and fresh and taking care of themselves so that they can support those who need their help, because we see that very frequently that the caregivers get so immersed into supporting the other person that they themselves start falling apart. Can you comment on that, especially from the, I mean, you deal with real trauma, you deal with heavy trauma. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, there's something there around, you know, that idea of toxic positivity. And I know there's a bit of a backlash against that, which is completely right, but <laughs> And it doesn't being positive doesn't mean that you can't recognize that things are really difficult or really challenging, right. but that you have an attitude of, but I know I can get through this, or I know that 
there are still these good things going on in my life even though this thing is not going how I want it to so it doesn't necessarily I don't think of positivity in that way that you've got to be happy all the time or you know it's got to be good vibes only or anything along those lines I think it's okay to be sad when it needs when it needs to be sad but having a positive outlook that you know that you can get through it you know you can get past it um yeah and certainly from the point of view of somebody that's looking after somebody else or you have you know you're in a position where you need to give a lot of your energy to somebody else and their needs having that that sort of internal reservoir of of positivity to fall back on is really protective in terms of of looking after your own self and your own mental health and being able to then be there for the person that you're you're caring for yeah I'm so glad that you brought up the I call it fake positivity and I think fake positivity is really an unhealthy place to pretend that you're happy when you really are not that's not a healthy place to be so very important to distinguish that you're really truly seeking like joy and you know, you want to keep your cup full. Talk a little bit about this. Like, what are the things that you or maybe you and your staff do to really find grounding and calm so that you can support your clients from a place of grounding and calm and positivity? Yeah. So I think with when it comes to our staff and our volunteers, we all have um, the facility to speak to counsellors, to speak to qualified counsellors um, because of the work that we do. The people that are actually delivering the counselling, that's part of, they're required to speak to. It's it's non-negotiable. Um, so I think making time, making space, which is scheduled in and non-negotiable, and that is a definite part of your, your week or your schedule, to have that reflection time and and process the things that you're you're working with is really important because they they're a lot to they're a lot to hold for anyone so um making sure that you're actually acknowledging that and giving that the the attention that it needs working through things talking through things is 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 key really to to how you sort of look after yourself and i think I do think it's really individual what works for one person might not work for someone else um you know from a personal point of view I really enjoy being outside so those I know that if I don't get enough time outside each day then it will affect my mood and then that starts to affect everything else but for other people that won't be relevant so it's about knowing what works for yourself and making sure you're you're doing that yeah, I love that you brought the word reflection and give your, giving yourself time and space. Because I think generally as a society, and you're based in the UK, I mean, you tell me culturally, I'm originally Bulgarian from Eastern Europe, and I've lived in the US more than half of my life now. I would say neither one of the cultures is about recognizing your emotions, experiencing your emotion. It's, it's more like, well, I don't have time to deal with this. Let's just keep moving forward because I'm busy. And I think generally, of course, that's not for everybody, but as a society, we don't give the reflection time, the time and the space that's due to deal with uh, whatever is going on into our life, right? It doesn't have to be huge trauma, but I do think it's powerful. And I also really like that you brought up that you have to find what works for you. It's not one solution works for all. I'm like you, I love to spend time outdoors. Daylight and sunshine make such a huge difference for me. And I highly try to um, to be intentional to spend time outside. But I always tell people, find what works for you. Um, I love to write. I love to exercise. That's a big one for me. So um, find what you love and see what feels keeps your cup full. All right, let's kind of switch gears and go to the topic of trauma, which is a, which is a big topic. And you specifically deal with women who have experienced sexual trauma. Um, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the modalities that you use to support people who have gone through um, to trauma. So we have a, a number of counsellors and each counsellor will work within their own modality. We're very person-centred 
and our organization is trauma informed so all of our ways of working are shaped by the understanding of trauma that the people that we work with have been through so that impacts all of our work but really our main intention is to work with people on an individual basis on a how they want to work what they want to bring there's never any pressure to talk about anything that that you don't want to the 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 survivor is the one that steers the counseling and they they're the one that does the work so it's about providing that space that time some tools to be able to process some of the things that come up but really it's within the counseling room the the survivor is the one that is doing all the the important work and is making that change and it's just about facilitating that really and what are some of the tools that you encourage people to do I would say outside the classroom on their own. So, I mean, obviously, again, to what we talked about before, giving, addressing what's what you're carrying inside to whatever detail you would like outside of the classroom. Like, do you uh, give people like self-care tools, um, tools to nurture their, you know, body, mind, spirit? Like, what are some of those tools that you recommend to people? So we have um, some self-care, self-help guides on our website, which we give to people. And they're really focused a lot on grounding techniques. So a lot of the people that we work with have um, experiences of anxiety. So panic attacks, flashbacks, et cetera. So grounding techniques are really important because they give people the tools to be able to bring themselves back to the present moment and pull themselves out of that panic or anxiety, um, which can be really, really transformative because anxiety is really crippling and it just can strike people at any moment. So it really limits what people are able to do. So mm. having techniques to be able to manage that better, pull pull yourself back to a a point of calm is really powerful okay okay um i know that when we did your uh, first interview you talked a little bit about your life journey and how you had a job that you didn't find fulfilling it was more like going through the motion and then you started volunteering and you kind of found that charity work does it for you you find fulfillment you find joy uh, you're passionate about it Can you talk a little bit about that shift in your personal journey, speaking of anxiety, and how finding something that I would say is heart driven, something that suits well with you, something that's aligned with you, has helped you personally uh, ditch some of that stress and anxiety? Yeah, I think it's probably comes down to feeling safe and feeling secure and feeling like you fit in in your role and that it's something you're passionate about so even when things are a little bit out of sight of your comfort zone you've got that motivation to do it because it's for a bigger cause so it pushes you to to sort of step past those sort of discomforts yeah uh-huh. yeah um so I think again it comes back to that idea of of joy I suppose it's it's not really joy it's more sort of um satisfaction or Mm -hmm. contentment yeah of Mm -hmm. that feeling that actually it's worthwhile doing um whenever I you know when I worked in previous roles that I've mentioned before that I, I didn't enjoy I just always felt very much like it didn't really matter if I went I mean obviously I wouldn't have got paid if I didn't <laughs> uh, which is motivation of of, of sorts it's motivation for many people right the <laughs> absolutely um but uh, yeah just felt very replaceable felt not recognized as a person it was just about what you're able to sort of come in and do and produce and you know, it's that whole cycle of consumerism and just um so I think as you mentioned earlier 
it's more of a family environment so the team that I work with we care about each other we uh, we care about the women that we work with on a personal level so it's not it it's it's more about that being recognized as a human and being sort of cared about and thought thought about I absolutely love how you brought that up because only imagine if big companies were ran as family and as truly caring about each other and truly nurturing each and every employee and truly providing each employee the ground to grow versus do this go through the motion. You're just a number, you're just a role, you're just a title. Truly looking at, it in, at each individual as a human, like what are your strengths? What do you like to do? What motivates you what drives you how different things would be um than if we're just going i mean sadly uh there is a a book uh i'm pretty sure it's from the anatomy of spirit i don't know if you're familiar with the work of caroline miss but she says in i'm pretty sure that is from there and she talks about how we uh prostitute ourselves for money and i was like whoa that that's like if you put it that way it's a pretty powerful statement and of course, we don't think about it that way. We just think, well, I got to pay the mortgage or got to pay, you know, whatever school, whatever obligations we have. And so frequently we forget about that fulfillment part, that joyous part, that purpose part of like, oh, this really is meaningful to me. And I really care about what I'm doing. And when things are rocky, it's OK, because, yes, the fear still comes up. And yes, I'm still uncomfortable. However, my purpose is driving me forward and I know things will be OK. It's a very different way of living. And um, going back to where we started, anxiety, um, I mean, I'll tell you, like, for me, it has made a tremendous difference in ditching anxiety and stress. I used to be a very highly stressed, anxious person. Um, and I live from a very different standpoint right now, because like you, I absolutely love and care about every single client who I have and every single life that I touch. So um, I, I really like how you brought that up, that, you know, looking at your uh, team members as a family and looking at each client as a family member and wanting to help them as a human being from from one human being to another yeah absolutely yeah. and I think the most valuable thing that anybody has got is their time mm -hmm. we have we have a very finite amount of time and we spend most of it at work during our sort of adult yeah. experience so you've, you've got to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, then you're not enjoying most of your life. And it, yeah, it goes again back to not every second of it is going to be great. Right. You're not, you're not going to. Doesn't mean there won't be turbulence. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to sort of hopefully finish your working day or your working week and think, yeah, I achieved something. Yes, that was worthwhile. I have spent my time doing something that means something um and I know that's you know that's a very privileged thing to be able to do and I do feel very very lucky that I am able to do a job that I love and I know that's not reality for everyone mm -hmm. um but if you have got any control over that then I think that's really important to try to do um because you know life is very short and we yeah. do spend a huge chunk of it in the workplace. I will share a quick story with you exactly to the point you just made. So um, one of my clients, she was out of a job and she was looking for a job and she was starting to freak out because, you know, she wasn't finding the job that she wants. She was, she was starting to run low on savings and it was becoming very stressful. And I talk a lot about my clients about alignment. And she came one day completely freaked out. And she was like, I mean, you could tell she's like disturbed and I said, what's wrong? And she was like, almost with tears in her eyes. She's like, I think I just did the dumbest thing ever. I was like, what happened? She goes, I got a job offer. And she's like, I checked with myself and the job was not in alignment. And she's like, and I turn it down. And she's like, I think that might have been a, you know, she was just like so stressed out about the decision she had made, even though the job was not what she wanted, but there was the financial pressure that like, I'm running out of time. Am I going to and I was like, congratulations. She goes, what do you mean? I said, that is a very courageous decision because most people would have been desperate and like take any job just for the sake of getting a job. 
And about a month later, she walked in with like the biggest smile on her face, just radiating. And she goes, you will not believe what happened. And I said, what happened? She goes, I got the job exactly that I wanted, you know, with the responsibility. The pay was better, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, that was like the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, was like testing you. Like, are you going to settle or are you not? And I mean, you said it greatly. Most of us settle. Say so we settle for jobs. We settle for relationships. We settle for the crumbs. When life is to be lived fully and how much more of a difference can we make into another person's life if we truly support them with a cup full and like passion and excitement versus like, let me just go through the motion. Yeah. So, um, Deborah, give us a piece of advice. I mean, if you want to put it in the context of trauma or not, or a favorite quote, um, what do you say? What do you say to our listeners? You have so many golden nuggets from this interview. <laughs> I think my kind of mantra that I try to live by is that idea of feel the fear and do it anyway, because I have had issues with anxiety in the past. I do worry about things a huge amount. And there's lots of things that I just don't want to do because <laughs> I'm scared. So recently I had to do a, oh no, I was given the opportunity to do a lecture. Um, and that terrifies me, standing up in front of a lecture hall full of people and giving a presentation scary but feel that fear and just do it anyway because once I'd done it felt great right. um so I think it's okay to be scared it's okay to not want to do it it's okay to think oh my god I really don't want to do this but then just do it anyway um and it's amazing what you can achieve by doing that so um that's that's how I would try to sort of live my life. It's not groundbreaking. It's not sort of um, anything new, but I think it's really it, it, sometimes the simple things are the the ones that are most powerful. In our life, yes, and that's you know I we talk about clients with that, and I'm like, when you feel that fear, is you know that's where you're gonna grow. If you if you live your life without fear, now fear and worry and anxiety are two different things, right? So let's make sure we distinguish them. Fear of stepping out of your comfort zone, of doing something new that you haven't done. And you do saying, you know what? I am terrified. Let's go. There is some something powerful about jumping on the other side and going, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did it, right? And that just reinforces, you almost become like a fear seeker. I don't know if you have experienced that. You're like, whoa, I'm like way too comfortable. Like, where is the discomfort? You almost start seeking it because you have that adrenaline rush and you experience that personal growth. So I, I don't think that's cliche. I think that's very powerful. And I think the power comes of the execution, right? Not just like theoretically listening to quotes, but actually taking action to step on the other side of fear. Very good. So uh, I do have to ask you, what is your definition of rebellious? I think it would be not being not being constrained by expectations and that includes your own expectations as well um i really like um the idea by mo gauda about his his talks about the becky brain in in that you're you've got this voice inside your head telling you you can't do it or it's um you shouldn't be doing that because you're 40 or you shouldn't be doing that because you're overweight or so it telling you all these things that you shouldn't be doing or you should be doing. And actually you can just say, I'm not going to listen to that. And if you, and he's, he puts it in the way that you give it a, a name separate from yourself. And then you can just say, Oh, shut up, Becky. I'm not going to listen. Um, and I think that rebelling really is about just, deciding not to be constrained by those sorts of expectations in, including your own and, and think well actually I don't care that I'm 40 I'm going to go and try a new sport or I don't care that I'm overweight I'm going to do running or dancing or any of the things that someone might say oh you know you can't do that 
you can't do that when you're this or you can't do that when you're that so I think just going out there doing things anyway and just breaking down those ideas of what you should and shouldn't be doing yeah ditching the shoulds and should not absolutely so Deborah uh, tell us a little bit more where people can find you support your work your organization is non-for-profit right so That's people right. who compel to contribute um, and support your efforts. Tell us a little bit where people can find more about you, about the company. So the best thing to do is our look on our website, which is quetzal.org.uk. There's lots of information on there about the work that we do. There's the self-help guides that I mentioned earlier, which anyone can access from anywhere in the world. And um all our social medias on there all our social media links so there's plenty of information that's the best the best way to find out about us okay well deborah i'm very grateful to you for being with us here today and i know we have a time difference so thank you for being with us kind of late into your time uh, i wish you the best of luck thank you for all of the amazing work that you're helping you know uh, people deal with their trauma so that they can live their best lives it's a lot of uh, very profound and deep work um, I wish you guys the best of luck. And again, thank you for being here with us to inspire us. If you guys have any questions, you know, whether they're related to the company or trauma, please do feel free to ask them for the company, for Deborah, and certainly let us know if you have any questions. Meanwhile, do make sure that you stay rebellious. Deborah, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks so much for having me. It's been really great. Thank you. Thank you. Did you enjoy the conversation? Like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Want to redefine your success equation to include a healthy body and a healthy mind? Check out our website at rebellious-studio.com.